On Saturday, September 16, 1989, the final section of Interstate Highway 279-579, also known as the East Street Valley Expressway, was officially opened. Befitting this project, the ribbon cutting was delayed for over an hour, awaiting the arrival of Governor Robert P. Casey, who was delayed by bad weather after attending a prayer breakfast in Indiana, PA. As they waited, PennDOT Secretary Howard Jerusalem had a half dozen polit politicians make speeches, but still had to ask the North Allegheny High School Band to play additional songs to kill time. The half dozen speakers, including Mayor Sophie Masloff, County Commissioner Pete Flaherty, State Senator Eugene Scanlon, and U.S. Representative William J. Coyne, all paid tribute to those peoples whose lives were affected by the highway's intrusion through their once bustling ethnic neighborhood and cited the changes some of these people had brought about in the state and federal eminent domain laws. Ironically, none of these people, those affected nor those helping to shape new laws, spoke at the ceremony. On that very spot where the opening day celebration was taking place had stood Nicholas Zalkovic's drugstore. He bought the building in 1951 from Heckles and operated his pharmacy there until 1986 when he was forced to give it up. Knowing of the dedication ceremony, his daughter, Dr. Audrey Zelkovic, purposely didn't tell her dad about it because she said it would have broken his heart if he had known the dedication was taking place where his building had once stood. He loved the vibrant neighborhood passionately and his customers loved him, especially the old Croatian people that could converse with him and place their prescriptions with him in their native tongue. When the governor finally arrived, he stated in a brief speech, we open the door to new economic growth for the city, county, and all of southwestern Pennsylvania. We open the door to improve travel for the thousands of commuters who daily visit the city and other communities along the corridor. The ribbon was cut at 2.15 and the governor's was the first car to drive the 13 and a half mile expressway linking Northside with I-79 in Franklin Park. Thus opened one of the most controversial highways in Pennsylvania's history. Government man came to my house, man I didn't want to see. Had a nurse of condemnation for houses on Old East Street. My wife said no, he's not here, he's down at the corner store. When all the while I was up the stairs behind a locked bedroom door. Condemnation and demolition, that's why they're after me. I don't know why they had to build that road that got me up a tree. Well, I just wanted to live here the rest of my days they didn't know they were breaking my heart to run me out that way
The jury is still out on whether this highway project produced the intended results. The planning and construction was racked with problems and the completed road was not adequate, nor did it fulfill the expressed expectations of its proponents. According to many, it contributed to the decline of the city. The effects on the surrounding areas are only now becoming more apparent. Hi, I'm Bernie Brittner. The story you're about to watch is but a brief look at the project and its effects on the city of Pittsburgh and the people of the East Street Valley. It is also an attempt to offer insight into understanding the process and implications of government-directed urban redevelopment. It will offer you a glimpse into the lives of those everyday people who lived in a neighborhood that existed for 150 years and what we all had to give up to the wrecking ball. We're going to take a long walk out East Street shortly. We're walking instead of driving because the safe sidewalks on both sides of the street for over two miles are very inviting. But first, we have some people to meet. We're at the corner of Nash and Avery Street in Old Allegheny, where the Avery Church stood until 1970. The church was built in 1849. We're going to meet up with David Grinnell, Chief Archivist at the Heinz History Center and a director on the board of the Allegheny City Society and an expert on Charles Avery. He's going to tell us a little about this building that should have been deemed a national treasure. Avery College, which was founded actually in the late 1840s, 1848, 1849, was built here on this corner, which was the the uh, northwest corner of Charles Avery's property. Um, it was built by a guy by the name of John Ingram, uh, who was a builder here in Allegheny City, built several other churches and other, like the North Avenue Methodist Episcopal Church, as well as the Avery College. Originally, the college was called the Allegheny Institute and Mission Church. The idea was to form a, a school for free education of blacks in the, in, around the country and to have a church or a you know, religious education for them as well. But it was non-denominational at the time. When I was a kid, I used to walk past Avery Church when I went to hang out with a buddy who lived nearby. And many times I heard stories from kids that lived on Avery Street that it was a station for the Underground Railroad during the Civil War. In terms of the Underground Railroad, some of the evidence that showed that this site was an uh, Underground Railroad site was <clears throat> well illustrated in, in some 1950s <clears throat> newspaper clippings um, that depict the interior of the church and show the minister uh, at the pulpit of the church where there was a door that went down to an area below the building and there was a room down there and there was also a tunnel that had been blocked up which it is believed that that tunnel actually went from the the basement of the church building all the way to the canal which today where the railroad tracks run uh, along the north side was originally the pennsylvania canal and charles avery's house actually was down closer to the canal so the the tunnel would have run from the from the school down to the canal David knew exactly where the church had existed for over 120 years. This is the spot where the Avery Church once stood. Uh, this is uh, Avery Street and it crossed right through here, went to Madison Avenue, stopped at Madison Avenue. Just to the um, <clears throat> north of, uh, of Avery Street would have been Papert's Funeral Home. There was a VFW Hall up here as well. These would have been here at the time that uh, the demolition happened for the construction of the highway. Um, in terms of the church building, the entrance was right here on, on uh, Nash Street. Um, had uh, steps going up either side uh, to a main doorway that was in the center. Um, as you can see behind us probably, you can see the, uh, the ramp to uh, the Veterans Bridge in the I-579. So this is 
This is where it all happened. This is where the site of the Avery Church and the site of the of uh, the first black college in in America. Avery, minister, philanthropist, abolitionist. I just had to find his final resting place. Charles Avery died in 1858, just on the you know the edge of the beginnings of the Civil War. Um, <clears throat> To mark his grave at Allegheny Cemetery, there's a massive monument that was built to him by his executors. Uh, one of the wonderful things is on the very front of that monument is a relief sculpture. Um, in the background of that relief sculpture, it depicts the college on one side, it depicts a schooner ship on the other side, and then in the front it has figures of an African American family. And then a, a figure of Charles Avery. And um, at one time, of course, it's, it's a little bit damaged now uh, over years of wear and probably some vandalism. But um, what the, the accounts are that that <clears throat> monument depicts is Avery sending an, a newly educated African-American family onto a ship to take God and, and Christ to the African continent. The congregation of Avery AME Church had to relocate to a church on California Avenue, but a significant artifact was saved from the demolition. The great things that they've done is they took the cornerstone from this church that was down here on Avery and, and Nash, and that's been reinstalled at their new building. This underground railroad station and first black college in America should never have been destroyed. It's really unfortunate that this building is, has been torn down and is gone. As you can see, it's a parking lot now, or at least most of it is a parking lot. Um, it's also unfortunate that the building's gone for the fact that there are so few sites that we know were part of the Underground Railroad. And what a rich history has been lost by this building being gone, I believe. It's, um, and of course, there's nothing you can do to re reconstruct that, that as, a, as an entity, that structure as an entity, to get the feel of what it must have been like to be in that building and to perhaps be hiding in the basement there. Shockingly, in Charleston, South Carolina, built in 1867, is Avery Institute, constructed with funds from the Charles Avery Estate. It stands to this day and open daily to the public while the original Avery Institute building in Pittsburgh is long gone.